Hey there, welcome back to Farmcraft. I'm John, and in this video I'm fixing this old chainsaw. It was a pretty tricky repair for me, and I get led down the wrong road a couple times, but I'm including the whole process so you can kind of see how you think it all through and hopefully get back on track, and in the end, hopefully get it fixed. So let's get into it. This is a steel 028 WB. This is a saw that's probably at least 40 years old. This was actually my father's saw. I used this when I was a kid. It's probably been three decades since I used it. As far as I know, he hasn't even tried to start this thing in many years, and I don't think it was running. So there's something wrong with it, and it's been sitting. That's pretty much all I know. Not really sure how old it is. You know, it still has the, uh, the old style caps on it that you have to use a tool to open. All the new stuff has these um, these style caps that you just use with your fingers. And I do not know what's wrong with it. I can tell you that that O-ring is not doing much for us. Yeah, the oil one does not have an O-ring. And it does have oil and it hasn't been leaking. I'm not, I'm not sure if that's really necessary. I think I would like to uh, drain whatever fuel is in here out. Let's see what comes out of this gem. Huh. Two-stroke oil. So looking down in the tank, looks like a little bit of residual oil and some crud. Nothing too bad. Filter looks okay. Manufactured by Steel, Virginia Beach, Virginia. That's interesting. That's not far from me. And again, I have to use a tool to open this up. I think this thing's got to be pretty old. What do you guys think? Air filter really doesn't look that bad. I'm just going to clean that off real quick. And I just realized I neglected to show you guys something. I One of the first things I did when I got this was give it a pull. And it's got compression. And from what I can tell, it sounds okay. So, I suppose I'll pull the plug out and take a look at it. Doesn't look horrible. It's pretty dark. Probably running a little rich when it last ran, but um, nothing we can't work with. I think she'll be a runner. The question is, is the carburetor gonna need cleaned? I say we put some fuel in it and pull this thing over, see what it does. I'm actually gonna see if I can get some more of that oil out before we do this. I got a little more oil out of it, but uh, <laughs> it's not the best looking stuff. I'm going to dump some fuel in there and swish it around and try to clean that out. Give us the best chance of running. Yeah, it's going to leak like crazy. I wonder if you can take enough. Oh, actually, a little tightening, it stopped. All right. All right, let's go see what this thing will do. I have a feeling the carburetor's totally gummed up. You know, one thing I think I'm going to do is put just a little bit of two-stroke fuel directly into the cylinder, just to see if it'll pop off. Just going to put a little bit of two-cycle fuel in here. That'll be plenty. So if this fires, this tells me a couple things. It tells me it's a fuel problem, it tells me the timing's okay, and it tells me the compression's at least good enough to run, which I'm pretty sure it is by pulling on it, but, um, all right, let's see. Oh yeah. So we're gonna need fuel if we want this thing to run, but uh, it sounded good. Look at that, that thing opens up. That's your choke. That's crazy. 
So this thing cracks me up. In order to choke it, you push on that, which brings that black thing directly over the hole and chokes the carb. It's not a, like built into the carburetor like all the other ones. And uh, what's pushing on that black thing is that little that little lever there. See it come up when I put the handle all the way down. So that's choke on and that's choke off. So when I squeeze the trigger, that's what's going on. So that's your throttle. And this thing seems like it just lifts right off of there, but it's a little bit spring-loaded. Am I free? There it is. And I got a fuel line right here. I've got another fuel line going straight back there. That's probably, that is the impulse. So these things have a little fuel pump. It's just a little diaphragm that operates off of the crankcase pressure to pump the fuel. There we go. One carburetor with a lot of sticky oil behind it. I bet you it's just gummed up. So another thing I need to do is put a little bit of compressed air through those, just to make sure they're open. Well, <laughs> that answers that question. Oh yeah, I can hear it in the crankcase, so you're good there. So the fuel lines aren't clogged here. This was my fuel line in, and this went to the crankcase pressure. So behind here is going to be the diaphragm that pumps the fuel, and it basically pumps it across to the other side where the jetting is, and then it gets jetted down through the jet there and sucked into the engine. I wonder if you can get parts for this. This is not a Walbro carburetor. This is a Marvell Schleber made in Ireland. Oh, on this side it says Tillotson USA. Yeah, I mean, I've got to get that off of there. Probably going to rip it doing it. And of course, I wouldn't mind buying a new one, but right now I'm not sure if I can get a new one. It's coming off. Oh, don't say anything. Don't jinx yourself. You know, it actually doesn't feel that bad. So this is the gasket. That's just for sealing this here. This is what matters. And these little flaps act as check valves, one-way valves on the, uh, the holes there. And I think they were stuck to the carb body, so uh, it would not pump if those aren't able to move. So I think there's a reasonable chance that this will work. Okay, so there's your needle. The needle's right there, springs behind that. I don't think this thing was pumping because there's very little of anything in this. I'm not seeing any fuel or anything. I mean, it's not that bad. Seems like that ought to be able to run. There's the needle, and it looks okay, but it, it's just full of that thick green oil down in there. So I don't think this thing was pumping. 
All right, I want to take these jets out. This is the low speed, this is the high speed. Before I do, I'm going to turn them in to see where they are. So the high speed was one and a quarter. And the low speed was one. Those seem wide open. So right there are the two openings where the fuel comes out. And I was able to see when spraying through the, from the other side, see carb cleaner coming out of both. So nothing clogged there. And on the other side is the opening for the high speed. This is behind the throttle plate. So it doesn't really come into play until you've given it throttle. It also looks like it might be a little bit damaged. So I'm going to put this thing back together and I think it'll pump fuel now. I think that was our main issue. So you turn it down until it gives you resistance. Now this one was at one turn, so one half, one right there. This one was at one and a quarter, so there's a quarter, half, one, right there. Spring. Now this isn't hard to do, but uh, it is hard to film because these things are so tiny and my big fat fingers get in the way and there's just no way to do it any other way. But basically I've got to hook, I've got to hook the needle there, put the axle in the groove, make sure the spring is on the, there's like a little nipple on the back of that, and then tighten the screw. To do that and not block your view is pretty tough. You can see there the needle is hooked and when this goes down the needle comes up And the spring is right behind in that little depression there. All that screw does is hold that, it just traps the axle there. So the axle is really holding everything in position and the spring tension keeps it all in place. And then this diaphragm is what actuates that. It pushes on that, allowing fuel in. And when there's enough fuel, it pushes back and turns the fuel off. Little fuel filter goes in, also known as a fine mesh screen. So typically these things will only go one way, so it won't, the holes are lining up there, obviously they're not going to that way, or that way. See, locating pin right there and there, and that's going to go in that hole and that hole. Click. It went on there. It might have gone on a little too easy. If that's the case, it's not going to be getting good impulse to make a good pump. Throttle linkage on there. Well, a lot easier going on than it is coming off. I don't know. 
Seems like it ought to run to me. Adjustments are probably off. I hope that's the issue. So I'm going to open the low speed a little bit. I just noticed that that basically says an inch and a quarter or a turn and a quarter uh, out for both the high and low. It says LA right there, but there is no uh, no other adjustment on this thing. So I spent some time tinkering with both the high speed and the low speed screws trying all different combinations and I'll spare you all that because it really didn't make hardly any difference at all. I still couldn't get it to run, it would not throttle up and I had to constantly have my hand on the throttle itself or it would immediately stall. Well, that's the right setting at least it's what it's supposed to be, but it still doesn't want to run. Well, now it doesn't want to run at all. So it seems to me that it's still probably not pumping fuel adequately. And there's two reasons that that could be. It could be that that diaphragm, even though it's felt okay, is not okay and I should get a rebuild kit and I'm, and I'm pretty sure I'll be able to get one. The other thing is the impulse line coming from the crankcase. I'm not sure that's uh, getting a good seal and if it's leaking, then it's not gonna pump very well either. Actually, before I get too far into this, I want to check the compression on this thing. Just make sure that uh, <laughs> I'm not wasting my time. Very wet plug. Which makes my theory that the fuel is not pumping adequately a lot less likely. So what should the compression be? I don't have a spec, but an old two-stroke like this, I would expect at least 120 for it to run. I'd like to see something more like 150. Uh, that would be pretty good. Let's see where we are. Here we go. So that's just shy of 150. It's probably just under 140. Yeah, about 140. And uh, that's certainly enough. Well, I just noticed my lens has junk on it. I hope I didn't mess up a bunch of footage. Thinking about some simple things that I should check before we go too crazy here. Uh, one is to change the spark plug. Because a bad plug, plugs can get hot and just kind of quit working. And this thing really just did suddenly just stop running. Could be the plug. Could also be the coil. But uh, let's throw, this is a brand new NGK, same, uh, same plug. Yeah, that didn't make any difference. So listening to this thing run, I have a feeling it has intermittent spark. I'm going to put a test light on it and see if we can confirm that. Well, I think my theory's busted. Can you guys even see that? The way it sounded like it was hitting so intermittently, 
I was thinking maybe it's intermittent spark. But yeah, clearly the spark is good. So uh, we're gonna have to keep digging. I'm gonna go ahead and get this fuel out of here. This thing does leak. Tomorrow I plan to go to the dealer and maybe I can either get the right O-ring or just get a different cap. Yeah, I definitely need to check the spark arrestor on this one too. Yeah, that's the spark arrestor screen on that one. That looks good. Yeah, other than being oily, this exhaust is all looking fine. Nothing obstructed or anything. So I think at this point the carburetor is my biggest suspicion. It can be hard to say for sure though. But it really seemed like we have a good steady spark. We've got good compression. And um, in fact, the cylinder looks flooded. So I almost think it's not a matter of the pump. Yeah, so um, this is what I'm thinking. That impulse line just pushes in way too easy. But uh, it's easy enough just to put a little hose, a little spring clamp on it to just tighten it up a little bit. I actually don't think that's the problem because the thing's flooding. There's plenty of fuel getting to the cylinder, so you know, if it if it was leaking too much, it just wouldn't pump. I'm going to get a rebuild kit for this. You know, sometimes these carburetors too, uh you're better off just getting a new carburetor. So I'll price that. You know, these things don't cost that much, and uh for whatever reason, I've even had, you know, really good dealers that know what they're doing say that at some point you just have to replace the carburetor but the guy wasn't able to tell me why. Um, like what is what in it is going bad that even with a rebuild kit, it still doesn't function right. I don't know the answer. Probably just some wear and air leakage somewhere. I'm gonna go pick up some parts and we'll be back. All right, back from the store. And uh, for the second time actually, some new developments, but uh, first I wanna put these caps back on here. So well, I say back on, they just sold me new caps. They have a seal on them, so hopefully that's going to work just with hand tightening. Okay, well, I was talking to them about this carburetor and pointed out that it only has the two adjustment screws. It looks like there's room for a third, but that's just an empty hole. So yeah, I was talking to them about that and they said, oh, your, uh, your idle speed screw, which is the LA screw, is on the saw. I said, really? Well, I must have missed it. So I came back and I looked at the saw and you might remember I noticed that it said LA there and I thought well maybe that's just an option for a different carb or something. Um, I'm not sure why I don't have that that adjustment screw. Well it's supposed to be right there. That is a threaded hole and that is for a screw that when the carburetor is installed goes down and pushes on the throttle. And that is your idle speed adjustment. No wonder the thing won't won't idle. So I had to go back to the store. He had a used one off of a junk saw that looks like it needs cleaned up, but uh, they hooked me up with a new screw. It's a. Uh, I looked to see what kind of thread it is. I couldn't figure it out. It's a specialized thread. Yep, that's it. So that's my idle speed adjustment. And that's going to make a big difference, I bet. For 10 bucks, I got a carburetor rebuild kit. So let's get this carb rebuilt, and then I'll work on putting this back together. Before I get too far, I'm going to go ahead and put this screw in, because I do not want to lose it. See all that fuel coming out? The first time I did this, even after trying to start it, there was no fuel at all. So it was not pumping. 
It is now. While the old diaphragms weren't too bad, the new ones are definitely more pliable. Uh, this should be an improvement. Now before I put this all back together, I noticed something that I ought to address now, and that is that that is loose. You look underneath, the, the handle and the fuel tank run along here and the, the handle, the, uh, the top handle attaches to that. And see there's a, there's a bushing right there running in there. There's supposed to be one on the other side too that would prevent it from doing that. So let's, uh, let's pull this apart and see what we can see. So there's a screw right there, but it looks like I gotta take this plate off. So I suspect I'm gonna find like a broken bushing behind here. So yeah, that is broken. There's another screw behind it though. Hmm. Could I glue that back together? This isn't that critical of a part. Right now it's doing nothing. I can only make it better. Eh, maybe I'll try. All right, so I just sprayed it with brake cleaner, and this is rubber. PC7 says it works well with rubber. Um, and then it, there's a metal washer on the other side, but pretty much I'm gluing rubber to rubber. And uh, I think this will actually work. So, going to my old go-to again. I then did a bunch of work onto it just out of frame because it's highly technical, you wouldn't understand, and it's top secret anyway. Okay, not really. I wiped it off with a paper towel and the cameraman's an idiot. I'll leave it here overnight to cure. So here's my plan. This is the hose that, that fits loosely on the carburetor. So I've got this, one of these springy fuel line clamps. And I'm gonna put it way back there and I hope I can push the carburetor on and then reach in there and, and get that in the position it needs to be. So let's see if that's gonna work. And when you push that carburetor back, it slides in. A little too easy. So now I'm going to reach back in there with my needle nose and grab that little hose clamp. It is on. I'm pointing it down so it doesn't interfere with the throttle.
All right, so let me see if I can show you. So these are the low speed and high speed, and then the idle set screw is right there. And it comes through under here and pushes against, I'm, I'm pulling the trigger, but it pushes against this here. So it's like a partial trigger pull is what it is with that screw. So if I go ahead and run it in, I need a screwdriver. You'll see the further I run it, the end of it starts pushing on that and opening the throttle plate. So that's it. That is your idle speed adjustment that was sorely missing. It's not going to run well with that screw not being in there. And the next time we test this, I should be able to adjust that to keep it running without me having to constantly be on the throttle. So I would have gotten a new air filter, but they didn't have any in stock. And um, he said he thought this looked pretty reasonable. It doesn't look that bad. So in order to really test this thing, I want the chain on there to have the proper amount of resistance and everything. And in order to, to do that and to be pulling on this, I really need that bushing. So the epoxy needs to dry. So I'm going to have to wait. But through the magic of YouTube editing, you won't. Here's our bushing. I think that epoxy bond is probably stronger than the rubber. And the rubber doesn't feel bad. So I think that's going to work. If it fails, I think it'll probably fail at the rubber again. Probably not at that epoxy. But yeah, whatever. Let's put it back together. Yeah, so that side-to-side -side play is now gone because we have an actual bushing again. So one thing on this, there is a huge, let me see if I can show you, a huge burr built up on this bar. It's a big one, not so bad there. Yeah, it's bad. See that? That's one of those things that will uh, really confuse you because you think your chain's sharp, but the saw still won't cut. And it's because that burr is there hanging up on things. Um, I cover that and a lot of other things in my chainsaw sharpening video, which I guess I'll leave a link to. So another thing that's good to do is just to flatten across the top. All right, so I'm no pro at this, but adjusting these now that I have an idle set screw, what I'm going to do is start it and turn in the idle set screw until it starts to run properly. At least it'll continue to run. And then I'm going to adjust the low speed screw in and out to kind of find the happy range. Like turn it one way, when does it start slowing down? Turn it back the other way, when does it start slowing down? And get it right in the middle. And usually the high speed you don't have to mess with. Um, like I said, not an expert. But uh, let's see what we can do here. Hopefully this thing's gonna work. So I'm turning up the idle speed to try to keep it running. Trying to get it to warm up a little bit before we go adjusting too much. 
So far I'm just doing the idle, which is basically giving it a little bit of throttle. So I worked on adjusting this thing for quite a while, tweaking both the high and the low speed, trying anything that I could think of. And I did get it to run better than it's run so far, but it still is not right. There's something else wrong with it. She's tough. The way it's, uh, it seems like it's always kind of missing makes me wonder if it doesn't have a bad coil. Probably wrong though. She's not playing nice. So this is the best I can get it. I mean, it's certainly a big improvement from where it was, but. So I can see fuel spraying. This is all wet with fuel. And um, coming out of the exhaust, I've got excessive oil. So it's running very, very rich. So there's something going on with this carburetor that I am missing. I'm not sure what to make of that. It looks chewed up. This is the high speed jet, the output of the high speed screw. And if you're wondering, I tried adjusting the high speed all over the place, no matter where I had it. It was bogging down like that and running rich. And it looks like it's torn up, so maybe that jet is just, uh, well, but then the high speed screw ought to be able to adjust it. But it doesn't. I was going to say maybe the jet's just too big, but... Then I ought to be able to turn the high speed screw in and make the thing run right, but it doesn't. All right, with how much fuel is spraying out of the back of this, I ought to be able to adjust that with the high speed jet. So I'm gonna do this again, see that it's flooding, and I'm gonna turn that jet all the way in, and if it doesn't stop, well then, that's your problem. The high speed jet is not working. It does stop spraying fuel excessively when I do that, but it still isn't running right. All right, this is a tough one. I think what I'm going to do is order a cheap Chinese carb. That's 15 bucks well spent to help give you a diagnosis. Uh, if I put it on there and it runs totally different, well then I don't have to worry about my coil. I know other things are, are working okay, or at least that's probably not the issue. Yeah, I have a feeling somebody tried to get that jet out of there and tore it up, and it's not atomizing anymore, and it may just be that it's not going to work right. And there was not a replacement jet in the rebuild kit. So that may be the end of the road for that carb. I don't know. Fresh off of the Amazon. A carburetor came with some other stuff that, uh, yeah, that looks like junk. You can see the screen's not even in place. Spark plug. This is the trash I'm throwing it in, by the way. It's just not worth using these junky things. 
a lot of these filters they end up going bad in the gasoline and then plugging things up so <laughs> but this is the real reason I ordered it just to get a different carburetor to try let's check and see where they got these screws one half that's just one out two two and a half that's not right three Three and a half is where they had it. So there's one and a quarter. What do you think? Is this going to work? Quite honestly, with that blowback, I tend to think it won't. But I'm not sure. And, uh, you know, this thing was, I don't know, $18. Yes, I'm throwing parts at it, but when the parts are only 18 bucks, that is a pretty cheap knowledge to gain. Basically, the way I think of it is if I could pay somebody $18 and they could tell me definitively, is it the carburetor or not, would I pay them? And the answer is yes. Yes, I would. So if that's the case, go ahead and get the part and throw it. Obviously, when the parts get expensive, that's when you need to be a little more careful about uh, using the parts cannon. It's the same kind of troubleshooting I do on a machine if it has, you know, two of the same part, like two coils, you know, or something. I might change them, sw swap them, and see if the problem moves. It's the same kind of thing. I'm swapping the carburetor out, see if it makes any difference. So getting it started took quite a while, quite a lot of pulls, and I ended up taking the air filter off which led to me using my thumb to do the choke. <laughs> it's not exactly safe. So it took some tinkering, but I did finally get it warmed up and then adjusted it as well as I could. sure what that thing is doing. It still seems like it's just missing. It's not blowing back, back like it was. I'm really surprised by that. I'm actually kind of wondering Am I missing spark? Is it just sparking intermittently? So I put my spark test light back on for another look. Do you see it? I am not getting consistent spark. That was uh, quite convincing. The light was weak, bright, weak, bright, and it was correlating with how it was running. So I put an ignition tester on it. This has an adjustable gap and it forces the spark to jump that gap, allowing you to measure the strength of the spark. Obviously a weak spark will not jump a very large gap. Really, it can't even jump that? Wow. It has to be that close together in order to jump that gap. That is ridiculous. It will not spark unless they're that close together. So I definitely have bad spark. How about that? So I think that carburetor actually did better than the original one did. This one seemed much more atomized. And um, so yeah, I think uh, I'm probably gonna stick with this carburetor 
Here's our coil. Just looking at the gap, I mean it is, that looks, looks appropriate to me. The gap should be the width of a business card. So another thing that can cause problems like this is um, if the key got sheared on this flywheel, because the magnet is right here, so the magnet going by the coil determines when, when does it spark. So that could make it run erratically too, but I just documented that I have an intermittent spark issue, and this wouldn't cause that unless it was like rattling loose, which it's not. When I ordered the carb, I saw this. It was 15 bucks, and I thought, let's go ahead and order it. HIPAA's not bad. I mean, it's not NGK. <laughs> I don't know how their spark plugs are, but I know a lot of the stuff that you get from HIPAA. Uh, it works. Hopefully this coil's not going to make a liar out of me. Alright, I'm a little confused about the wiring here, so I'm going to pull this flywheel off and we're going to see what's going on. Oh, there it goes. I was say, I'm hitting that pretty hard. I'll be darned. This thing is points. And I guess that's a condenser. Yeah, that's a lobe right there. It's thinner there and thicker there. So that would be pushing on this, which opens the points. I found a serial number on the saw and I did a search and found that this saw was made in 1981. 43 years old. The key for the flywheel looks good. It's not sheared off or anything. The slot there also looks good. You know, it is conceivable I could just clean the points and maybe it would work. Not with your luck. I cleaned them up, I put it all back together and tried the ignition tester. There it starts sparking. That's crazy. So, the points are not working. Most likely the condenser's no good anymore. In fact, it looks like it's a little bulge there. Condenser is just a capacitor, they tend to go bad. I'm not going to buy a new condenser because it's probably going to be cheaper and better, it'll definitely be better, to buy a module to convert this over to electronic ignition. And um, I don't think I can get one locally, so I'll have to order it online, so we'll see you in a few days. You're looking at what may be the most ridiculous grain mill in existence. That's my Grizzly wood lathe, and it's got a nice variable speed drive on it. So I hooked it to a hand crank wonder mill, and we're going to make some bread. Warning, known in the state of cancer to cause California. Be careful. So here's our little module. This replaces the points and allows this coil to function basically with an electronic ignition. And here's our little wiring diagram. Pretty simple really. It's saying to cut the wires, ground the coil, or ground the module, and connect it with the coil. And if it has a switch, that needs to be connected as well. trying to figure out where to mount this module. I was tempted to put it like right there. The problem is it's actually just a little bit too wide. It's too close to the shaft because the flywheel sticks out there and actually quite a bit. So um, that wouldn't work. And even if I go the other way and get it all the way up against, see now the connectors against the wall, there really just isn't, isn't good room for this thing under here. You could maybe jam it in there, but I don't think it's going to work. What I did find, though, is that, and mounted to the coil, like grounded to the same thing the coil is grounded to, is the best place for it. And believe it or not, right there, there's plenty of room. This cover goes on there, and there's nothing There's nothing there. So, uh, so yeah, that's where I'm going to put it. 
Ah, no going back now. All right, so this is the wire from the switch. This is basically the kill wire. Here's the wire that came with our module. And here's a wire that came with the coil. So those all need to connect together. This is actually Loctite 222, which is a low strength thread locker. This is something that won't be so tight that it's gonna make the bolt break off or be difficult to get apart next time. But it will help this thing with vibration. With this module sticking out here, I wanna make sure it stays put. That thing's actually sticking out just a little bit there. I just took some needle nose and bent that connection. It's insulated and now it, it fits down in there pretty well. So this is a business card, put it between the flywheel and the coil, the coil is still loose. Rotate it around so that the magnet is now pulling the coil onto the flywheel. And then you can tighten down your bolts and then take the card out. Alright, now it's just a matter of hooking these wires together. I thought about soldering that connection, but there's going to be a lot of vibration on this and I think that would end up breaking. Uh, I'm going to tape that so that it can't unscrew. I just want to make sure it's not going to come over and contact the flywheel. Maybe I'll zip tie it to the, uh, the plug wire right there. That's gonna do it. Still not jumping that. Well, sh all right, let me update you here. So, um, I wasn't getting any spark, and uh, I end up doing doing some troubleshooting to try to figure out what was going on. So, I verified that I had connections everywhere, then I eliminated the, uh, the kill switch. So, and it's still eliminated right now, it's not hooked up, this wire here. So, and then I was worried that maybe the module being right beside the coil was interfering somehow. Uh, I put my spark tester on, I got no spark. I put the spark plug on, I got no spark. I actually touched the wire and I felt a very weak attempt at a spark. So kind of confused. So I started fiddling with things and I ended up moving the module over here to a, a different good ground and uh, that didn't do anything. So then I took the new coil off and put the old coil on and now it works. Hopefully, Hopefully this coil is not gonna make a liar out of me. Just cause it's new doesn't mean it's good. So that's going back. We now have a good quarter inch. So that is a much more vigorous spark than I had before. And to be like where the spark plug gap is actually gonna be, that's gonna be a good vigorous spark. So huge improvement. So let me get that wired back up like I had the other one, except with the old coil. We got it wired back up and a good spark. Good strong spark. You can see how different that is. Let's go see what it does. So I put the carburetor back to the standard setting because I think it's gonna run different.
So that was a huge improvement. It was still bogging a little bit at times at full throttle. Here's a good example of what I'm talking about. So I ended up adjusting the high speed screw, something I said I don't usually have to do. And I also adjusted the idle speed and the low speed a little bit. And it took a little bit of tinkering, but I finally got it where I was really happy with it. Well, that's running great. Just took a little bit of tweaking of the high speed screw and uh, I found its happy spot. This is the first test of cutting wood. I sharpened the chain, haven't done anything with it. And it hasn't been running a couple of days. So let's see what it does. All right, how many pulls? Too many. Maybe it doesn't need to be choked. Well, that was a successful test. So a quick review on what I had to do to repair this. There were multiple problems and there's one big thing that I learned and it's gonna change how I tackle things in the future. So the first problem was the carburetor was not pumping. That was easily fixed by freeing the stuck pump membrane and then even better by doing a rebuild kit. The second problem was there was no idle speed screw on this saw. That was kind of a curve ball. So I had to talk to someone to figure that out. The third problem was the carburetor's main jet was not atomizing well. Now, I think the saw may have run uh, even with that carb, but I think it's better with the new carb. The fourth and main problem was the weak spark, and that comes into where I'm going to change what I do in the future. I usually go to these spark lights because they're quick and easy, but I think going to an ignition tester first is better. Not only does it tell you if the spark is there, but it also tells you the strength of the spark and obviously that's important to know. If I had used an ignition tester when I first checked the spark on this thing, I would have discovered the primary problem much sooner and fixed it much quicker. So what do I think of the saw after giving it a test drive? I think I push it too hard because I'm used to my other saw, which has so much more power. Uh, this I need to kind of take it easy so I don't bog it down. Uh, this is nowhere near as powerful as that saw. But um, nice little saw actually. It's uh, not quite as heavy as my big saw, but um, definitely has more power for the mid-sized stuff than my small one. So yeah, it was a tough repair, but we got here in the end. Thanks for watching guys, we'll see you on the next one.